Hey guys, Death Slender Magic here, and it's time for another very overlooked but very awesome card, and this one's just awesome because it's weird. And uh, this thing is an antique because it was in Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited, as well as some set called Master's Edition 4. I have no idea what that is, but sounds old to me. In a previous video in this series, I of course talked about Lich's Mirror. Well, you can't talk about Lich's Mirror without talking about Lich. Now, as the tale goes, just in generic stories, video games, lore, just in general, a lich is a wizard that decided, hey, I don't feel like dying, so I'm going to become undead without even, like, really technically dying first, and then undead can just exist forever as long as they don't get destroyed. So they learn and learn and learn, and, you know, usually it's forbidden books, and they can't, you know, they're not allowed to learn how to become a lich, and, oh, that's so terrible, and they have to do all this horrible stuff, but then at the end, great, now they can live for, like, hundreds of years. Fantastic. Fantastic. So it's apparently very complicated and some very expensive components go into becoming a lich, but once you do it, you're all set and uh, it, it can backfire and it can fail, uh, according to like every story and book and movie and everything ever. There are, of course, some drawbacks, and I'm sure number one on the list is the smell. I mean, come on, you'd have to use like a smell dampening spell 24-7. You cannot just Febreze away your undead stink. Also, I don't know, usually in most games it's like a, a loss of hit points or even a, a gaining of hit points, but usually some stat goes down like constitution or something. It's all different, but it's usually you kind of become weaker, but then you make up for it with magical learning and magical powers because, hello, you've been alive for like 300 years. Liches are deemed to be extremely evil, a very evil aligned. I've never heard of a good lich. Necromancy, after all, was kind of frowned upon in, uh, well, at least Oblivion. Last time I fought a Lich in Dungeons & Dragons, my uh, level 27 archer used, uh, uh, what is that, dual shot? Uh, double critted our monk. He, uh, he used dominate on me. So yeah, the Lich used dominate to control my next turn and made me shoot the monk. Critical, critical, killed him instantly. <laughs> Oops. In most games, you do not want to go up against the Lich. They are like the all-powerful boss level at the end of the dungeon. This card, though, doesn't really follow the lore in that sense. Uh, you should probably, if you become a lich, which that's kind of the storyline of the card, you throw it out as an enchantment and you as a planeswalker, as a player, become a lich. They probably should have had you, like, anytime you generate mana, you generate double or something like that. That would have been really, really fitting. Or all of your spells are reduced by two. Or maybe you have to sacrifice another creature to become a lich or something like that. So they, you know, obviously they didn't go too storyline heavy, which they kind of did and kind of didn't back then. So I'll let them off the hook. But what it does do is flipping nuts. Now, I don't want to read the card as written because it's confusing and stupid. I'm going to read the revised Oracle text, which is like their new official ruling version of the text, and that's what you're supposed to go by anyway. So basically, as Lich enters the battlefield, you lose life equal to your life total. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life. If you would gain life, draw that many cards instead. Whenever you're dealt damage, sacrifice that many non-token permanents. If you can't, you lose the game. When Lich is put into the graveyard from the battlefield... You lose the game. So you're really banking on that Lich stuff. I mean, <laughs> it would have to be a life gain deck. That's the only thing that I, I could think of where you'd be like, yes, this card is a big advantage. Otherwise, it's just nothing but detriment. It might as well say every creature your opponent controls has, uh, I, can't, I can't really say Annihilator, you know, one or two or three or whatever, um, because it's not on the swing, but it's pretty close. I mean, somebody does three damage to you, there goes three lands. I mean, you're in trouble real quick if you start getting hit. If you have a way to perpetually gain quite a bit of life per turn, though, now we've got something because you could put so many cards in hand. I mean, it could be a dirt cheap death toucher and dirt cheap life linker deck where you can just summon creatures over and over and over and over and over and just flood the field. If you get hit once or twice, though, you are done. I mean, as soon as you start running out of lands or sack all your creatures, uh, you're in trouble. So overall, I think this card is incredibly stupid, but the fact that they brought a Lich in, it's an enchantment, and it costs quad black. That is so classic. So no, you're all as thoroughly disappointed as I am that the ultra-powerful mega-boss-level Lich is absolutely pathetic in Magic. Well, I'm gonna do a rare double card. Overlook but awesome number two. Nefarious Lich. This is printed as a rare in Odyssey, and that's it. And hey, that looks familiar. It costs four black, and it's an enchantment. It's almost like they were trying to fix the original card because it sucked. I'd say they pulled it off because if damage would be dealt to you, exile that many cards from your graveyard instead. If you can't, you lose the game. Now that's a little bit nicer of a buffer than, um, non-token permanents on the field. You kind of need those. 
if you would gain life, draw that many cards instead. So that's the same. And then when Nefarious Lich leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So know what you're thinking. This is the same damn card. They just changed the first effect to not be some detrimental suicidal nonsense. I know, I'm shocked as well. I've never seen this close of a of like a functional reprint. And you know, it's obviously not literally a functional reprint. That's um like exactly the same except for the card name, but this is pretty darn close. And this is the vastly improved version of it. So, the first lich I wouldn't even bother, but if I really wanted to lich out in a game, maybe I would put both in. I mean, you can. They are two different cards. If you had like like a self-mill kind of deck or you cast like Traumatize on yourself, so you had a huge buffer of cards in the graveyard, that would be awesome. Or some kind of effect where at the beginning of your upkeep or whenever you deal damage or whenever you get dealt damage, you know, instead... Well, I suppose that wouldn't work, but somehow put cards into the graveyard constantly, but then when you're running low, just recycle them with like a, uh, what is that, Elixir of Life or Eternity or something like that. I mean, there's a ton of cards that put an entire graveyard back in your library and then start it again. You know, you would never lose the game. And that's the point. Liches are supposed to never die. That's why they become a lich. They're very hard to destroy. So these are two uh, very noteworthy cards that I really, really liked. Um, I'm just waiting for them to bring in a Beholder and... Now, from what I recall, this has actually been brought up in interviews with um, staff members. Uh, they said, hey, why don't we bring over some of the famous creatures from D&D? You know, since Wizards of the Coast owns D&D. I believe they actually specifically mentioned a Beholder in the list of creatures they wanted when this person was doing the interview. And yeah, I could probably just grant all your creatures Shroud or something, or, or like make all spells cost five more. You know, that whole anti-magic field ability that they use. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath because uh, things that are exactly specific to D&D instead of just, you know, like liches are everywhere. It's, you know, nobody has like a patent on the word lich or copyright or whatever. Okay, maybe not a patent. Okay, that, that might not be it. How to become a lich 101. Oh, but I patented it, so you, you can't do it. But um, yeah, Beholders and anything specific to D&D, they said they the, the intellectual property people over at that branch of wizards just really doesn't let anybody else use it for some reason. I mean, it's not even like you're asking another company for permission. They are really missing out on that one because if they had a whole bunch of like Dungeons and Dragon tie-in cards, which they, you know, kind of already do, let's be honest, like kobolds, gremlins, goblins, you know, vampires, come on. It wouldn't be the first, but all the real specific stuff, you know, all the real specific name stuff, nah, we're not going to see it anytime soon according to that interview, unfortunately. But for now, you got two lich cards, one crap version, one fixed version. So have fun liching it up and I'll see you guys next video.